Hey guys, Skill Out Noodle here. You know what time it is. It's spooky time. And that means everybody's creating spooky artwork. And since I'm held against my will by the algorithm to create something this year, I decided to make the most Halloween themed blender project ever. So follow along as I show you my process in creating this haunted house in the Skill Out Noodle Halloween special. I start off in Blender by creating the terrain for my scene. Using a plane and subdividing it a few times, I begin using proportional editing to modify the plane to make a hill that my haunted house can rest on top of. I pull the road up and use sculpting tools to bend it and add more imperfections to its shape. I mean, this is after all a jagged hill, it's not going to be the best landscaping you've ever seen. Now that I created my hill, I needed a haunted house to live there. I started off my haunted house by adding some primitive shapes and giving them some basic details in edit mode. I made sure not to go too far into the details, but I was given some freedom here considering that I'm using reference for details and the proportions of the house. For the rooftops I used cylinders and gave them a cone shape, and you might ask, why not use a cone? It's right there! For free! And I say no, cones are awful. Don't you ever come near me or my son again. Anyways, I needed to be able to add more edge loops so I could warp the roof with proportional editing. Can't do that, can you, cones? For buildings and environments, once you have a few things modeled and you have a method for creating things, stick to it. You don't want to jumble together mess of details looking like a clown house. Another little trick was that I used booleans to cut some holes for windows and doors. After applying the booleans, I used the cutter shape to actually add the details inside of the doors and windows. Easier than going and modeling them from scratch. Using a custom profile setting and setting the segments really high, I got a really super old fashioned look, something you would see on old historical structures. I added some last details to the haunted house and added a staircase leading up to the front door plus a little extra changes to the terrain, and I knew that I was ready to begin texturing. I started off with just the foundation house. For UV and wrapping the shapes, I found that smart UV project or even just cube projection worked fine for this purpose. I went about doing this for every part of the house, applying a small selection of materials. Try to stick to three or four materials or else, you know, clown house. I also applied a ground texture to the terrain and a water texture using a simple noise texture and some glossiness. A big trick for getting more detail pumped into your piece is using displacement maps. Adding a displacement modifier to your desired object, create a new texture for it, and move over to the texture panel. There you'll find that you can add an image texture, and that's where you plug in your height map from your texture. Back in your modifier panel, add a subdivision surface and move it above your displacement. Go to the displacement settings and change coordinates to UV and select your UV map. Just like that, you have real world detail in your model with little to no effort. I repeated this across every model, and while it did take a little bit, it ended up being worth it for all of the detail. For lighting my scene, I just placed a bunch of lights all throughout the haunted house, by windows, doorways, maybe a few on each floor, and then I added a moonlight for a backlight. Now that the haunted house was finished, I now needed to really fill out the scene. First, I added rocks from Quixel Mega Scans and placed them along the cliff, stretching them using proportional editing. Leave me alone, it's useful. And I ended up reframing my scene to have a more dramatic effect, and added a foreground rock to help balance out the frame. I rendered out both a mist pass and a regular pass with some glare through the compositing window. In Photoshop, I painted in a blue sky and added a moon. After some color adjustments and tweaks on the frame, I called the render finished. Hopefully I was able to make the algorithm happy. Let me know what you'd like to see me create next time in Blender, and make sure to like and subscribe. Also, go check out my Patreon and download this scene along with many others. Hey, just before the end of this video, I also wanted to mention a shout out to Saturn Days. He's giving me all my music, everything. Woo! That's him right there. And, uh, you know, we're just out here making content and uh, it's been great being able to use his music, but he's coming out with a new project, Liminality. You guys gotta go check it out. I'm showing a video of it right up there. So it's the pink, it's the pink video. Go check him out. It's good music, good stuff. All right, thanks for watching.